I think we might have a five-way title race on our hands in the Premier League, and it's what everybody wants to see, especially coming into this busy Christmas period. Uh, Tom Lockyer, get well soon, mate. Nobody wants to see that. All the best, OK? Uh, a Liverpool-Manchester United boring nil-nil draw. And we've got an exclusive James Tarkovsky football filling interview for you guys. Let's have it. Right then, well done boys, nice to see you, Merry Christmas, we, Merry are, Christmas. we are just a week away from the big man coming down our chimney and um, filling up our sacks. Um, <laughs> uh, we've got to start with Liverpool, we've got to start with Liverpool, Manchester United, Mark, I'm going to come to you first, it was, it's a good result for Man United, it mm. was a very underwhelming game, what are your thoughts? I think for me it was a really exciting game to watch, but I imagine for everybody else it was absolutely boring. Yes. But as I've said, we've said it a few times, haven't we? For me, it was a bit like Stoke going to, to Liverpool or Birmingham City going to Liverpool. <laughs> are you it's, putting Man United in the same bracket? But as I Stoke think and United Birmingham? are bad. We've just been be- beaten by Bournemouth. <laughs> we've just been knocked out of the Champions League in a rubbish group. Yeah. Like people need to get real. Man United are really bad at the moment, and people were talking about sacking the manager if they lost that game. How else are you supposed to go there? And I know it's upset Van Dyke and Klopp and everyone, but I take that as, you know, fill the glass up with tears because it's like, well, you know, we've really frustrated them and that's what what what, what needed yeah, to be what, done. Yeah, what do you make of Virgil van Dijk's comments then? Because obviously after the game, he's he's just basically calling out United and saying there was only one team that wanted to win the game. They came here, were happy to basically park the bus. Has he got a point? He's got a point that he's a bitter moaner, frustrated, because, I mean, Roy Keane said, you know, you know, it's not like you've won loads of titles yourself, but I remember in 99, we were 2-0 up at Anfield and Ince scored an equaliser and it was like they'd won the league. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. like, it depends where you are. Like, Liverpool at the moment, admittedly, are on a higher trajectory than Manchester United. We are where we are. We've got every right against our biggest rivals to be celebrating the fact that we've, we've annoyed them and we've not been beaten. And instead of everyone talking about Ten Hag out, we can get the celebrations out, get the mulled wine out and enjoy a run up to Christmas without everyone talking about sacking our manager. So, But, I, but Liverpool are, on a, are a better team in a better place. Mm. I understand their frustration, but they were in the shadows of us for years and they'd have celebrated that as well. I, I think it's mad how we've had a, a Liverpool-Manchester United derby, which is always a spicy affair. And everybody's come away from it just a bit like, ah, oh, because Liverpool fans are, it's like two points drop for them. Um, they did okay. They didn't play brilliantly. I'd say they probably deserve to win, but you've got to put the ball in the back of the net. Mm. And Man United fans come away with, yeah, it's a fantastic point, but we set up to get a point, and mm. we're sort of, nah. So it's a bit. It was a bit. And then you've got the media who really would have had in their drafts this Ten Hag out thing. Yeah, they sure. want to hit Monday yeah, yeah, morning yeah, yeah. with all the clicks. So there's a lot of frustration, but ultimately, I don't give a toss. Manchester uh, United got a point. It's a good point. Sweet, isn't it? Um, there's a couple of talking points from the game I want to go through. Um, first of all, I want to talk about Alisson's save from uh, Hoyland. Um, big save. That's Alisson all over for you. Um, should he have hit the back of the net, though? What? I think it's always easy to say that the forward should do better. I think his first touch doesn't allow him. But Alisson's, like, he's not right on him, but yeah. he's in the half-and-half position. And I just think if, if you're talking about Hoyland and where Man United are at, that one moment... Is like the old Mourinho setups at Chelsea and when he went at Man United, they'd expect to take that chance yeah. to win the game. I just don't think the kid's in that moment at the minute. The only way he can beat him, he's got to lift it high because he's that big Allison and the frame and everything. It's just pace, try and whip it past his shoulders. Yeah. Otherwise, he's going to get a block. But he didn't get a good contact on it. He scuffed it, bounced it in the ground and the big frame saves it. But I didn't feel confident. The actual move itself was probably the best move yeah. of the game. It was fantastic play. But you never felt as though you were going to beat him, did you? Is that is that the way Hoyland's gone this season? When he gets in front of goal in those positions, particularly in the Premier League, are you always a bit sort of you don't really back him that he's going to put it in the back of the net just yet, do you? I think he's going to be a fantastic striker, but he's going to be. I, I still think he's very raw. I saw in the Bayern Munich game was it or Galatasaray had a really good shot off his left foot, keeper made a good save, but you know. And Alisson's to me the best goalkeeper in the world and he's also brilliant in one-on-ones yeah. you contrast with what Anana did against Kingsley Coman if that's what um, Hoyland's used to training against you've got most of the goal to shoot at, <laughs> aren't you whereas, whereas Alisson's running out making himself big yeah. which is look it's on his weaker foot you're going to say he's got to score it but 
you know, Alisson, so goal, Alisson goal, consistently yeah. makes those saves, doesn't yeah, he? But that's that's the point, isn't it? You know, when you're talking about the, the, the details of why a goalie makes save or why a striker doesn't, he's never going to beat him when he tries that finish. Yeah. The only finish is got... Dink. Is, yeah, dink it. Or he's From got his go, legs, maybe. Yeah, and, or it's high yeah. with power. Yeah, yeah, and then, yeah. you, obviously, the chance of you missing the target and everybody laughing at you because it's a real poor... But that's the actual finish that you've got mm, to take against him. Yeah. 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 What do you think of Anana's performance? I thought it was very erratic. Yeah. I mean... Look, he's come away with a clean sheet at Liverpool, but I think uh, an Evans and Varane in front of him wouldn't have been overly impressed with him behind him in terms of what he did. I thought the save from Van Dijk, from the header from a corner, it's a save that every goalie yeah. in the majority of the leagues you'd expect to make. I think the parry he makes to his right, I think it's from Salah, he, he, he's in a good position, but like he's pushing it back in a danger area. I were. Uh, as we're always taught, like your forwards driving at that far post for the tapping. But I think if I'm facing an hour now, I'd wait a little bit further out. Hold back a bit. I think his parries yeah. come come into a place where normally you, you can get a finish if you're not driving in to cover the back post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think he should have held that one in the first place anyway. I don't think there's enough there's pace. Power yeah, I don't think there's enough pace on the ball from Salah or whoever it was to to sort of really warrant him pushing it out anyway. I think you just take a nice little step there, it's a collapse dive, and you take all you're the pressure the off. Situation yeah. for somebody who as experienced as he is in international football and obviously played in Champions League finals he's read the situation really well but he, he's compounding his efforts because he's, he could really cause himself more problems where you've got to back yourself in that position and try and catch the ball yeah. which is what goalkeeping really used to be all about but I think the erraticness of him coming at the high second balls the, the little punches yeah. and the contacts it's just a scrap where you want somebody to take real charge of that and, and you know look like you're going to claim it and catch it under some big pressure yeah. and take the sting out of it for your defenders. Do you know what? He's, he's, it's like he's, he's, uh, he is at least on the front foot with some of these crosses, yeah? And he wants to come and help out and he wants to come and get involved. But I just feel like he's not necessarily the best aerially dominant goalkeeper anyway. And he's trying to prove a point almost and he's getting sort of a bit stuck in no man's land where he's where it is like a little bit of a sort of a little bit of a punch, a little bit of a parry. He seems trying to, to come in for it. stuff that's not there. And I think he's just trying to push himself a bit too far at this moment in time. I think he just needs to settle down and get used to doing I'm what happy he's good with, at. I'm happy with the clean sheet. But I was going to ask you about the red card, yeah. especially because you've got an interesting one. But one thing that's really been missed and it just came into my head when Motto was talking about that one-on-one the other big chance was when Maynou played a brillant pull to put Gnacci yeah, in. And, he just and the, got tackle, the tackle by Trent from yeah. that, who gets yeah. not a lot of credit defensively, yeah. he had to make that because yeah. if he makes it wrong, that's a red card. It was a really good tackle. But to one, from one right back to another, you actually think they got it right sending With Villa a red card? Off. I yeah. do, yeah. I do. I think it's just pure petulance, pure unnecessary. You've got to take control of your emotions there. You're away at Anfield and I understand it's going to be charged and everybody wants to see you show a bit of, yeah, let's have it today. Like. <coughs> but you've got to understand as well that once you've got that yellow card, stop. Just stop, yeah. And we we had this we had a, we had a bit of an argument about it what earlier on the on the United stand. Who, who won? No, it was a, it was a, it was it was a differing <laughs> of opinions. That's all it was, all right. It was a differing of opinions. Um, and I just said somebody with a bit more emotional intelligence, somebody who might be a bit older, a bit wiser, a bit more professional. Like Ben. Somebody. Yeah, like, that's it. So yeah. I said using the grey cells, mate. Exactly. Yeah, using the grey cells. <laughs> Harry Kane wouldn't get a red card in that situation. No. Harry Kane, and he went, yeah, but he's boring. I went, that's great, but he's still on the pitch. You've got 11 men still on the pitch. If that's in the 60th minute, you've still got half an hour to go. And I love that he's showing a bit of emotion. Who is, who is it at that moment? You're just entering injury time at Anfield. Yeah. Like, yes, the decision's wrong, but it's a throw-in. Yeah. Just reset and defend exactly. the throw-in. Just get back but in. Like, who is the emotion for? Yeah. Is it for his other 10 teammates? Is it for his manager in the dugout and the coaching yeah, staff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or is it for the thousands it's of Man United fans the fans. there? But That's it's a it show it's that a you show. don't need. Yeah, um, and I just think you risk all yeah. to get to 90 minutes at nil-nil. However you've set up, you, you, you've done what you wanted. You're getting a point at your fiercest rivals and you risk, you just know in the game now, there could be 10 minutes injury time or whatever. You've been on the coaching staff of Premier League football teams when you're getting at half-time and full-time. And if that was your team and that player had just been sent off in that moment in a big derby like that, what are you and what are the manager saying to a player like that? Well, you, 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 you're losing the will to live with them. It's really? just stupidity. Yeah. The fortunate in this instance that it's not cost you, yeah. but it can cost you. Mm. And normally the football gods are against you when you have crazy moments. I think that uh, whilst I don't agree with what you're saying, the referee is, um, is a shambles. He's an absolute shambles. Because if he's going to do that, 
then Darwin Nunez should have been sent off in the 20th minute because what he did was a lot worse. It's a consistent and, and, and that, and that, 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 no, that annoys me. There was also, there was one where Mabry got fouled right in front of him and he played it on and then Luke Shaw chopped him out and took yeah. the yellow card. And I was like, but you've missed it. He missed a, I thought he had a really bad rep. I, I don't rate him. I, think you know, I, know, uh, I know they say he's a good ref. No, I, I know what you're bad. saying. I think they are, it is a bit of an inconsistency thing, but they are slightly different situations. I just think that is, what, 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 Dallow's done is he's asked for a red card, mm. yeah. And you, as a player, you should never get you put yourself in a position where you're asking for a red but card. But I think the Darwin New Year's one is worse because Dallow does the descent. You give him a yellow card, and then he and he gives him another one. So he's given him two yellow cards for descent, whereas Nunez knows what he's doing on Johnny Evans, yeah, yeah, yeah. gets the yellow card, and then he's like that. And I'm like, well, that's, that's yeah. descent. Well, and yeah. normally, normally the petulance there does get, because some refs yeah. just yeah. Oh, yeah, have that away, at that it. moment. Yeah. There's, and that, there's been somebody had that before, and as soon as they gave him the clap. And that, that would have been a massive message. You know, we're talk, what we're really talking about is respect for referees, and I don't respect Michael Oliver, so I'm never going to agree with you about Delo. But if we want respect for referees, Darwin Nunez looks at Johnny Evans, does it, yellow card, and then he goes, you've got him. That, that's a massive message for the PGML to go, well, look, he's done a foul, the referee's right, and then he's been dissentful, and that's why he's got it. Well, right. You're going to talk about more of these elbows. So he's had an elbow. Um, Ming's... Not Ming, sorry. Kufal. Yeah, Kufal did the guy. Yeah, for, yeah, Jimenez for, Wolves, for the red card. Jimenez yeah. with the cells. Yeah. So, like, they know what they're doing, got, don't they? Long staff. No, it wasn't. Well, the cells did Jimenez first up. Oh, he did, didn't so he? Yeah, the three little elbows, elbows yeah, this yeah, week yeah, yeah, yeah. where they've all had a little elbow yeah, true, yeah. and Lascelles and Kufal got nothing. Yeah, true that. Yeah, got They know what they're doing, don't they, as yeah, well? They and that yeah. then uh, leads into other things. All right, well, get in the comments down below, you lot, because um, it's fair to say we disagree or we agree to disagree or we agree to agree. I don't know what it is either way. And quickly, before we move on, massive game next week, Liverpool versus Arsenal. Um, how do we see that one go? That's, that's proper, that, isn't it? That's proper. It's a great fixture to have just before Christmas. I think the way Arsenal are playing at the minute, I'd have to go with them. I'm going to go draw, I'll score draw. I'm going to go for a Liverpool home win then. There so three completely <laughs> different opinions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we'll, well, well, it could, it could be Somebody's anything. winning. Somebody it, is going to come away from this with a bragging right. Like could, they know what they're talking about. Could be anything that game, I can't wait. Um, so yeah, that is a massive game, by the way. It's 5.30, 23rd of December, which leads me on nicely to... Do we have a five-team title race on our hands? Dave Watson, yes or no? Yes. Do we? Do uh, we? 100%. I think the league this year is phenomenal. I don't think we've seen the results that City have had over the last few weeks coming, yeah. if I'm honest. Yeah. But I think the failure of them to get over the line even over the weekend against Palace, it just gives everybody else that impetus to move forward. Villa got the European football, tough game at Brentford. I think Brentford were probably doing enough to win the game, but they get a red card and Villa then go on and win. It brings them straight into it. Spurs, I feel we've really rated them all season long. Yeah. And I think if they wouldn't have had the setbacks they've had through injuries and suspensions, I think they would have probably had a few more points than what they've got. I think everybody's up there. I think that Man City, we expect the expected of every season. Come January, they'll go on this run. I'm not sure it's going to happen for them this year. It's what we want to see, though, isn't it, Mark? Mm. This is what we want to see. We want to see Christmas time that it's neck and neck and there's a point from first to second to third to fourth. That's exactly where we want to be. I know I'm sure you'd like to see Man United in amongst that mix somewhere, but it's not going to be there yet this year. We'll give, them a, we'll give them another couple of years. They might get there, but it's nice to see at least, isn't it? Yeah, I don't really put... I think it's a four race at the moment. I, th I don't put Spurs in there. Um, I just think that the, the fixtures they've got coming up over Christmas, yeah. I think they might just be... They're, no, close, to, they're close to City, but I don't, I don't look at City. I look at Villa and Spurs and Liverpool, and that's the, the gap at the moment, because City will come back into it. But Spurs have done really well, considering yeah. their injuries. Um, but I think... I was, I was listening to radio today. Apparently Son's going to miss a few games. He's off to some tournament as well. Um, what is, tournament is this? Is it, is it the Asian yeah, games? Is it yeah, the yeah, they've got something going on. And then obviously... Um, Basuma getting sent off. I mean that. Oh, wow. Four match ban for that as well. Um, so I think Spurs might. Well, there struggle were a couple well. of tackles like that at the weekend, wasn't it? Ben Me um, yeah, uh, and I, then the Basuma. And it, the, I'm watching them do it, and you can see them winding up and running for it. And I'm thinking, just pull out. Mm. The, Don't you can't the, do that anymore. The ben Me ones really. Uh, Basuma, you see in the end, he gets. Yeah, him just, he gets him. Yeah, yeah. But like, it's not a real Ben Me. You can see him running out of the box, <laughs> thinking <laughs> counter attack. You, yeah, I mean, to be honest, like. 
Thomas Frank said that's not a red card. Oh, I is. mean, it's a come red on. card all it day. Is. If on. his leg's planted, yeah. it's the, game the, over. The player's got done wonders, wonders to, see to it avoid it yeah, and get uh, out the absolutely. way. That's the only reason why Thomas Frank has said that. But it doesn't matter. It's all no, about no, the no, intent. No. And Ben Mee, great lad, yeah, no, but he not, needs to realise sometimes yeah. he's not at centre back and defending. He's running away from the attackers, the, the opposition goal yeah. here. So just like leave just it. Put the brakes on there, Get back, big dog. It were it were a horrendous tackle. Aston Villa, without doubt. Surprise of the season so far? Yeah, I mean, it was such a big game to go to Brentford and win because they've had a bad away record and, of course, Brentford were winning. And then they get that red card, as Watto said, and for Villa to then go and do it, I think is... Um, you know, they've just they've got United on Boxing Day. I think it's a massive game because they've... If How they won that one going? Well, I think United will win because I support United. But, <laughs> but I think that if Villa go to Old Trafford and win, because it's an away game and it's a big game, that's the league they'll get. For that, that is a massive They'll be fine statement. at home. And top four would be amazing for them, but they, they may as well just keep get, put, plugging away. They've got Sheffield United this week. You'd expect them to win that. Yeah. Just keep accumulating the points. Um, apparently, there's a bit of money gone into the club last week, so maybe there's a bit of money in January to spend. Uh, I'd, 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 if Villa are still there in April, it would be fantastic. Um, what do you make quickly before we move on? I want to. Did you see the Emmy Martinez and Neil Mopé yeah. shenanigans? <coughs> um, the, the, what do you make of that, Mar, it, mate? It all starts, doesn't it, from the back pass? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Honestly, if ever I'm in goal and I got a back pass like that, <laughs> you're just coming into injury time, you're winning 2-1, they've got 10 men, and somehow he swings a left footer oh, back to you, it's comedy, bounces isn't it? once, and you're thinking goal for yeah, a minute, yeah. and he's full stretch, but then he, he runs past him. Little shoulder bars, little sh- but pathetic. Look, 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 Emmy makes me laugh. I, <laughs> I, th- I think what he's got as a goalie... I think the little moments in his character make him the, the great goalie yeah, that he yeah, is. Yeah. But when you're watching it from afar, it's crazy. He's yeah, six foot five. Crazy. Honestly, three men couldn't knock him over. He <laughs> he, he falls flat on his uh, face uh, after Morpay's give him a little barge, which is nothing. But then they get a free kick, Villa. You, you know what's going to happen. Yeah, when, sure. when Martinez is running over, yeah. you know you what's, what's going to happen, coming. don't you? you so it gives it him a little push in the back. He goes down as though he's been shot. <laughs> Martinez gets his two size 12 gloves on him. Up you come, mate. And then all carnage ensues. Villa bench is there. Um, Emery's like, come on, lads, think, think, think. And they're shoving him another red card. The whole thing were crazy. But that's Martinez. He, he just brings something to it. And I think that's what makes him the genius in goal he is. But for the opposition, staff, players, fans, it would drive you absolutely bonkers. Yeah. But he plays on it, doesn't he? Yeah. He's a shit house, isn't he? That's what he is. <laughs> and you need one. Yeah, you you do. do need one. You do. I'd rather have that shit house on my team, you know. Yeah. Combine the fact that with that he's a world class goalie, absolutely. probably one of the top two, top three goalies in the Premier League at this moment. That's why I'm so impressed with Villa. That's why I think for me, like Unai Emery so far, without doubt manager of the season so yeah, far. He's he has good, been yeah. absolutely incredible what he's done with that Villa team. And not only that, you you we all live in the Midlands, we live around this area, so you get to see and talk to a lot of Villa fans and you feel the atmosphere of what's going on there. And it is just a pure buzz at this minute. It's yeah, like they're yeah. in dreamland, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But don't get carried away with thinking that this is just a one-off. They're a proper team, aren't they? They're, they're, when you watch them, you go, yeah, they know what they're doing, these guys. If they keep, as long as they keep Emery there, the project's there, isn't it? That's yeah. the thing, yeah. yeah. They've got the right man at the moment. All right, well, um, to answer your question, do we have a five-team title race? Yes, we do. I think Christmas is going to be the massive, uh, massive sort of decider on all this kind of thing. I'm sure we'll see a few teams either pull away or drop away. Um, but we're looking forward to it. That's what we're here for. It's a Premier League. It's the Christmas season. That's what we buzz off, don't we? Um... Man City. Let's move on to Man City. Um, nobody has seen this. Is it a downfall? Is it? Is it? Is it a surprise? Um, they've got injuries just as as well as anybody else has, I suppose. Yeah. But I don't think anybody has seen this coming, have they? They've had a lot go their way as well. I mean, we we, we were talking. I I think it should have been a red card for Edison. Uh, but what I was saying with the way the rules work now, it's they probably technically got yeah. it right, but. That for me should have been a red card because what's the what's the justice for Palace when you know you just get a yellow card and a free kick on the edge of the yeah. box and he was going to get a shot on the empty goal, but they go two 0 up and Palace still get back. So the justice Palace, you know, they they just snapped your hands off for a point before the game, and the fact that they're giving up these sort of results and you know, they'll say they miss Haaland, but they miss De Bruyne. Yeah. That's what they miss, and they miss a Rodri. De Bru- Haaland's a fantastic striker, but there's just something not right. Maybe it's a hangover from winning the treble. Maybe the motivation's dropped a little bit. That can be natural. Maybe they're just not as good as as, as they were last season. But I still think 
I'd still say I'd still expect them in the new year to go and win 15 would games. Would you right? expect them to still win the Premier League? No, I, I do for the moment. Every point they drop is great for the title because I still think that they've got that. And Arsenal and Liverpool and Villa will will know it as well in their head. They've got that psychological January, February. We can go and win 14 games in a row. Whether they do that, I don't think they actually would because I think there's too many teams that are. are, are are capable of, of getting stuff off them this year. Yeah, I, I, the thing is, I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure now. I, if you'd have asked me two weeks ago, I'd still say, yeah, Man City. I still Man City. But some of the recent results have really are kind of. I'm just thinking, wow, I did not see that coming. Mm. The old Man City, when they go two 0 up at home to Crystal Palace, win that five or six. It's as simple as that. They win that five or six. They've won one league in their last one league game in the last six in the Premier League. Yeah. And now they're off at the Saudi Cup, which means that they miss a game whilst everybody plays. And if that top four, top five all win, mm. it's. I think psychologically they'll look at that and go. That's a bit of a gap, that is, you know. That's a bit of a gap. I think you'd be crazy as a betting man to bet against Man City, but I feel as though this this time I think we will have a different... Jamie, game. betting odds. Can you get me some betting odds on the screen in a second, please? I want to I want to have a look at what the uh, the outright winners of the Premier League are. I, I bet you, as it stands at this moment in time, I bet you it will still be Man City outright winners, even though they're, like, what, four or five points behind? But you made the point. I just think there's something missing. You go 2-0 up at home to Palace, and Palace had not even been in their half, yeah. to be honest with you. And actually, Palace got brave, played one ball down the side, cross and goal, and naturally at 2-1. But like the way that they didn't see the game out, Foden actually had the ball in the centre circle, lost it crazy. Yeah. And then the impetus to be in the back corner, chasing back, and then it's such a, a rash Oh, it's moment. so rash, isn't it? Oh, it's my so God. Rash. And it's a penalty all day. And, yeah, Palace deserved something because of the bravery and whatever, but the game should be finished. It should be 2-0. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and that's it. Um, I don't think many people would bet against them. I just have a feeling this year the league's that competitive and teams are seeing more daylight in how to get something off City that it's bringing everybody else into play. Well, yeah. there you go. We've got the betting odds in front of us right here. Man City are five to four at this moment in time to win the league. Arsenal, Arsenal second favourites at nine to four, and then it's Liverpool eleven to four, Villa twelve to one. Your Manchester United. Quite a fancy a pound on that. Manchester United two hundred and fifty <laughs> to one. Um, so yeah, it. everybody, everybody in the betting world still thinks that Man City are going to do it. But there you go, there you go. Um, right, what have we got next? Yeah, I can't see. I think I think De Bruyne is a is a big miss for them. Yeah, Bru- I think if they can get De Bruyne back in whenever he's back and he stays fit till May. But then again, there's no guarantee at his age that he doesn't break down again. He, you know, can he play three hundred minute games a week? I don't think he can. So I think the De Bruyne problem is a problem for Villa. Uh, for, for Man City. Um, okay, uh, let's talk about Everton then, because another fantastic win for them. And luckily for us here at the Football Film, we had James Tarkovsky on the Fozcast, and we managed to sit down with him for an extra five minutes to talk all things how this season has gone. James Tarkovsky, have a little listen to this. Right, James, um, do you know how many games you have played under Sean Dyke? Oh, um, off the top of my head, I'm going to go for 252. You know what? That's incredible. It's wrong, but it's a very good guess, right? So at this moment in time, you've played 249 games under oh Sean. God, what a guess that is. Under Sean Dyke. So you're free off, right? Very, very good. By the time this actually goes out on our football fill in segment, you'd have just played your 250th game for Sean. Um, how much have you enjoyed playing for this guy? Um, yeah, a hell of a lot. I mean, he, he picks me all the time, which is always nice. Yeah, that is nice. If yeah. a manager likes you and he picks you, it's always good for you. He didn't at first, to be fair. For the first 18 months, I had got a kick. Really? No, no. The first 18 months, Michael Keane and Ben Mee played every game for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, ever since I got into the team, he's been incredible for me. Um, really improved me as a player, especially defensively. Yeah. Um, and, and as a person, to be fair, yeah. So I've got I've got a lot of, a lot to thank him for. And uh, realistic aims for the season then for Everton. Obviously, like I say, the ten point deduction. If it wasn't for that, you'd be mid table. You'd be above Chelsea right now. Um, but you'd like to think that relegation won't be a genuine threat. So where can Everton finish the season? Yeah, I mean, it'll all depend on the, on the point situation, which is still yet to be decided again after the review. So um, but we'll see what coming into the season. We're picking up points at the minute. If we keep picking up points the way we do, we'll, we should be in good stead come, come the final game of the season. Well, thank you for coming on the football fill-in, James. Thank you. Nice to see you, mate. Oh, that that right there. <laughs> Back to the show. What a boy. Uh, I told you, he's an absolute legend, by the way. He's got a massive head, by the way. Mm. Honestly, he's got like a massive That's why he scores head. goals from yeah, it's like Honestly, it's like a Minecraft head or something. <laughs> it's like a Lego head. I wonder who's got the bigger head, Tarkovsky or Maguire? 
Whoa, it's a slab off. That is <laughs> it's an absolute slab off. They're both brilliant in the air, though, aren't they? Oh, absolutely brilliant. What players? Um, both of them players, by the way. Um, but yeah, Everton, let's have a little talk about Everton then, because um, I am blown away with how they have transformed themselves this season into a genuine, considering they got off to an awful start as well. So after five games, five Premier League games, they had one point, and that was a draw against Sheffield United. And everybody was calling doom and gloom. They're going to get relegated. It is what it is. They've had the 10 points taken off them. And as they stand today, having just won four games in a row, they're six points above the relegation zone. It's some sort of turnaround, isn't it? Uh, phenomenal. I actually think in this game, um, like Dicey's all seen as 4-4-2, all this kind of thing. But actually, I think he he done Vinnie Company tactically because he changed to a back three. Yeah. Uh, it, and it might have been the injury situation. It might have been forced upon him or it might just have been a piece of genius. Look, who knows? But there's no way uh, Burnley were set up to see Everton playing a back three in that game. They, they didn't see it coming. Uh, Burnley just l- couldn't cope with the width ah. of Everton in the game. Um, and we were talking, uh, just touched on it before the show. Obviously, Calvert Lewin has a fantastic header. Trafford makes what a one, save. one of the saves of it's the a season. Beautiful save. We, 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 me, and, me and Tom actually, Ryan Legs, were sitting in the pub watching it, and he's made this save down low. Tom was busy chatting away over there, and I've gone, boys, but have a look at this proper save. This, you know, because when it's so close like that, and you've got such little time to react, you have to almost go back on yourself because he, he hasn't got time to go forward and try and put. So to go backwards and then still get the strength whilst you're going backwards to keep it out the back of the net, proper save. Phenomenal yeah. save, but for me, like as a young goalie, his position for the cross. I know. No, life of a goalie. So, so brave. Yeah. Makes a worldly save because he's in a great position to give himself the best, yeah, best yeah, chance. Yeah. And then Everton, look, set piece kings this yeah. season. Mm-hmm. Um, but he'll be really disappointed. They'll be disappointed. But that's the life of a goalie. He's yeah. just had the, one of the best moments he maybe ever have in his career. And then it's Everton, set piece. They're going to load it up in there. And unfortunately for him, he made two or three really, you know, simple mistakes yeah, for him yeah, yeah, yeah. so before as the corner's getting taken he takes two or three steps forward yeah. then he has the tech two or three steps back then he's taking off two feet instead of one he's trying to get two hands on it to punch one hand punch or just flick it on get it Anything, out of the, even if you try just, and grab and just sort of help someone on or pat it away just, some, you've got to get the first contact basically you have and he gets it all wrong Yeah. so that's the life two minutes before couldn't do anything wrong Two minutes later, you, you've kind of let yourself and the team down a little bit. And like they never really recovered from it. But Everton were just on the front foot the whole game. I yeah. thought they were more aggressive. I didn't think that Burnley looked like they were really going to score, if, yeah. if I'm honest. Yeah, true that. You know what I mean? Yeah. They had a, Nothing more possession. They're not going to score enough goals. Yeah. And Everton are, are a real threat. All, all round the field. Well, at the other end of the pitch, then Jordan Pitford. That's um, is it six clean sheets for the season? Yeah, Four clean sheets in a with row. Anana. Joint with an a joint with an honour. There you go. Oh, um, this, you know where I'm going to go. Go on. I think I don't think Pickford's that good. Wow. He's got some good defenders in front of him. He's yeah. got some good yeah. defenders. Yeah. I, I think Pickford's okay, steady goalkeeper, but I don't think he, he deserves more. Credit. I mean, look, David De Gea got 17 clean sheets, and we sold him last year. This so. is this is the problem, yeah, with. Goalies who just do their job and yeah, he does go his about job, yeah. it. Yeah, he does his job. And you know what? This is what everybody said about De Gea last season. The seasons and see, he does his job. And they, then, they, you'd notice and, it. He went. And then they've got rid of him. And now look what situation yeah. they're in. And I just think it's better the devil you know. I really, really do. And that's saying that. And that's not even putting any respect on Jordan Pickford's name, by the way. Yeah. He's a guy that turns up for England yeah. whenever he's called upon and does more than what you could ever expect from a goalie. Super reliable, super li- reliable for Everton. Joint clean, top clean sheet... sheet jo- That's really hard to say. <laughs> Joint top clean sheet keeper in the Premier League. There you go, very nice. Um, I just think he's doing a fantastic job. I'm buzzing for Everton, I'm buzzing for Daichi. Big James Tarkovsky, you're the man. Um, let's have a look at the other things that have been going on in the Premier League this weekend as well. Um, we've got to talk about um, Tom Lockyer at yeah. Luton. Um, nobody likes to see this kind of stuff. It's absolutely horrible, isn't it? I was at home watching the uh, Sky Sports and when it came up straight away, everybody just thought, it's a sombre, isn't it? It takes over. Yeah, you, you um, always fear the worst, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, and do. when when it said it was Tom, and you knew that he'd obviously gone down in the playoff final five or six months earlier, it, it, it's obviously the alarm bells are ringing. It, it's not very nice. Uh, I thought myself that it just brought the whole world of football together again. Yeah. I I was so relieved, obviously, the tech giving him off and he's stable and all them things. But I thought 
the reaction of the two teams and the fans. You could see the emotion, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, certainly from the Luton players and the Luton staff and the manager for sure when he walked around the field. A, a terrible moment, but I thought it brought the whole world of football together for the right reasons. Yeah. And that's the only positive I can get out of it. What the future has for him, who knows? The only thing that's important is that he's fit, well, and able to continue in some way, shape, or form. Whatever that looks like in the future, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I agree. I think football has changed a lot in recent years, certainly with the Super League and stuff like that. And I think back to the Christian Eriksen one, mm. and I'll be honest, I thought. This Never ain't looking again. good. I told my kids to go out the room. I didn't think he was not going to play again. I didn't yeah. think he was going to live. Yeah, yeah. So when you when you you know these things do happen, um, and I thought that you like you say, I think the way the fans have dealt that you go out on a Saturday before Christmas at three o'clock, you want to watch a game, and I don't think anyone cared that the game was getting no. getting postponed or anything like that. So look, it's be interesting to see what happens because it's um, you know it's happened twice now, isn't it? But you know Christian Eriksen still plays. Who knows with modern uh, science and everything, but the main thing is that he, he's uh, he's on the road to recovery, hopefully, and, and like you say, he walked off, didn't he? So, yeah, um, he, he had a cardiac arrest on the pitch. Shout out to the medical team, by the way, they were rapid on it and responded incredibly well. So, uh, yeah, Tom, all the best, mate. One one thing quickly, I just want to um, talk about is is with the regards to sort of the medical screen and the heart screen and the tests that they do as footballers. Um, Basically, how it works is the beginning of every season, when you report back for pre-season training, um, you're subjected as part of your medical testing, whether it be sort of like you touch your toes, whether it's your cough and, you know what I mean, checking your balls and all that kind of stuff. Um, one big That's just part, you in the showers. Yeah, that's just me with the boys, yeah, having a nice time. Um, one big part of it is, is your cardiac screening. So you will either go to the hospital or they'll bring all the equipment to the training ground and, you, and it takes a long time as well. You'll, you'll be hooked up to, you know, where they put all the, the tabs all over you kind of thing. Um, and they'll, they'll check for loads of different things, the rhythm of your heart, and all that kind of stuff just to make sure the valves are pumping in the right direction all that kind of stuff um, but that, that's good isn't it because if you think about over the years we've had like the West Ham lad was it Mark Vivian Foe Vivian Foe yeah, I yeah. Mean, I'm not saying it would make any difference but they, they do detect these oh, like, partners it's, 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 yeah it's, it's like super stringent now yeah. and the fact that it happened to him at the end of last season and for him to be able to come back and play means that he must have passed all the tests yeah. so I'm sure they're going to have to have a look, bit, little bit look, uh, sort of of a deeper look into it, but it is a thing that is very, very stringent in football nowadays. And I think they all, I think they might do it again in sort of January as well. I think once you get halfway through the season, I think they do I it think, again I and th- compare it to yeah, your previous I think results. The, the players' welfare now, I think there's no, no stone unturned, and for sure, with him having the episode in the playoff final, they would have probably been more stringent. Mm, yeah, I yeah. would assume, but but all the other players in all the leagues would be tested once or twice a year. It's become part of the, the ritual and ultimately we, what we want is players welfare to be first and foremost because we don't nobody wants to see what happened on Saturday and the game is so demanding now isn't it I mean, we talk about it from a quality point of view but these footballers are playing two three times a week yeah. again all this added time you know we saw an offside I can't remember what game it was I think it, was, I think it might have been the West Ham Wolves game yeah so Two, three minutes again, waiting for an offside. Yeah, these right. players are standing running 100 around. miles, are standing and go again. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's the good. fitness of these players. and yeah. <clears throat> well, it's only getting more intense as well. But um, yeah, Tom Lockyer, get well soon, mate. All the best, okay. Um, quickly, Raul Jimenez, uh, was it a red card? Fulham, Wolves, uh, Fulham, I, uh, Newcastle? I thought it was. And then I watched it again and I thought, actually, I don't think it is. I thought it was like, I don't know what the what the hell he's doing. Yeah. It's almost like he's yeah. going yeah. like to kung fu kick him and then just sort of goes, no, I won't. And just sort of uses his arse instead. And I thought, you know, I understand the red card, but I just thought it was odd. But then, like you say, he's, he's been clattered before, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's, he's got the elbow red before. Mist. I think he's had a bit of red mist. The only thing that I think, um, when you look at it with the VAR, the, the minute he's set off to go for him and he's going up with two feet, looks like he's going to karate kick him. Then he has that brain thing, yeah. oh shit, and he turns and gets him with his right arse cheek, but he's out of control and yeah. it's just, yeah, yeah. It's just, see, it's just madness. Yeah. I, th- I, think, I think for me, the only thing I would say is that that's the sort of thing I just want the referee to referee. Yeah. And if he gives a yellow card on the pitch, it's well, a yellow card on the yeah. pitch and live with Did it. Did he give a yellow on the pitch? He gave a yellow he on the pitch, yellow, went yeah. to have a look at the screen, the VAR over And they never, they n- I've card. never seen one decision yet where they ask him to review a red no, and they go, no, no, no I'm exactly. happy with it. Yeah. It's a waste of time. Exactly, they are, yeah. they are so, so that's why, even if you give him a red card on the pitch, yeah. I'll live with that. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, happy with that all day long. Basumas, was it a red card? 
It has to be, done not it? It has me. to be. I, I didn't think it was, again, because wow. I thought on the pitch he gave me yellow, didn't yes, he? Yes, he did. Same thing. And yeah. it's, we're back into the slow-mo world. Yeah. Now, yeah, when you see yeah, on the yeah. slow-mo, it's reckless. Yeah. If he gives him a red on the pitch, I think it's a red. But yeah. what I will say is, it's, he is trying to win the ball. Yeah. It's a bouncing ball, and that's always it's dangerous, not, it's isn't it's it? Not it's not as always... bad as the me one. Where no. Me's... no God but no. me only got a yellow. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It, I mean, but I mean, that, if I'm the ref there, and he had a good view of that, I think that's a red all day. That's a red Even all day. Even in real yeah. time, I think the Bazoom one, he's a little bit unlucky, because yeah. he's more in control and the bounce of the ball, but... In the in the modern thing, and unfortunately with the still images like you say, when they slow moves, it down, I think on it, the pitch, Ben Mee was a red card, should have been a red card, yeah, the but he gave a yellow card. There. The Basuma one, on the pitch, he gave a yellow card, and I would have understood if he'd have kept it a yellow card, yeah. and then the Jimenez one, he gave a yellow card, overturned to the red, and again I would have understood yeah, if he'd yeah. have kept it a yeah. red, yellow card, or right. even given yeah, a red no, card. There's, there's a little bit in them. And then, a uh, question for you, what over Cario save on uh, Friday night for, for Spurs against Forest? Um, the one where it's the header, and From it's, the corner, it, it's, it? it's a goal. It's just a goal. And somehow... Vicario is sort of falling back and manages just to boot it away. They're the kind of ball sometimes as a goalie, it's like, oh my God, I can't believe he's headed that down but right by where my foot it's, is. It's just, yeah, you, you, it's the most awkward save yeah. you can ever imagine, isn't it? And in some ways, he probably thinks he should be coming for the, the yeah, ball in. Yeah, that's why he's and, in that position. And in the that's why he's in the yeah. position. Yeah. He's all out of kilt because anywhere else he heads yeah. it in. But it's in that moment, and I think he's he's just in that moment at the minute. He's playing really, really well in goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I, I think uh, as a goalie, he's been uh, one of the signings of the season because you don't expect somebody to come in and hit the ground running as a goalie like he's at the ground running yeah. when, when we've spoke about other goalies and we can speak about Turner in that game for uh, Forrest can yeah. we ultimately it's 1-0 they're in the game um, they're causing Spurs a few problems with the long throws and there might be an action come their way all of a sudden he's got the ball at his feet it's a poor kick Kulosevsky's on good form at the minute but he drives in and he compounds the error yeah. he's gone so low and he just hits it high, which is what I spoke about earlier, where you can beat Alisson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've got to be brave to do so. But he's so low, the ball's past him and it's in. And you see with his reaction, he's had a poor kick, yeah, but then compounded his own misery. And the level of the Premier League, you're not going to escape with things like that. Here's a question for you. If Alisson is the best goalkeeper in the league, is Vicario now the second best goalkeeper was, in the league? Because I, I, I think was just so. about to I say, think so, yeah. I was just about to say, Alisson. Um, Emmy Martinez and Vicario are my top three goalies of the season so far. Yeah, top three goalies. Yeah, of the I was going to say so I, I would find it hard to, for me to put him above Martinez, but for sure he's in the top three. And I think the thing for Vicario, like you said, is where's he come from? Italian keeper yeah. from not from a top Italian no, team. No, Scout, the scouting yeah. department, whoever was behind that, and I don't know whether it's the current one or it's the previous one under Conte, because he's the guy who got Kulusevski. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, he's an amazing. They've done some good deals, Spurs from Italy. Yeah. Don't know. I think that one were in, in place to be fair. So it might have been uh, yeah, it was on the Patricia back. Or something like that. Yeah. Football, yeah. Well, but, I, I but, did an but interview it's, with it's uh, really James cool. Madison a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we were talking about Vicario, and he said I'd never heard of him. He oh. said when he signed, I'd never heard of him. I had to go on YouTube and have a little search up for some of his best saves and stuff. And we were all in the same boat, though, yeah. weren't we? But well they're, done, they're though, great, Vicario. Though. Absolutely buzzing for you. Do you know what time it is, lads? Quiz. Come on. Come on, the boys. It's quiz time. Let's have it, Jamie. <laughs> All right, stop your waffling, everybody. It's quiz time. Jiminy, and you have got 10 of your finest quiz questions for us. Are we good to go? I do indeed. Um, you ready? Yeah, scores on the board is six to Mark, four for me, and three somehow for Watto. Okay, question one. Milan Barros first played in the Premiership with... Port Liverpool. Club? It is Port Nope, it's Liverpool. Yeah, of course it's Liverpool. He played for Liverpool. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're, so, not the right you're, answer, so, you're so worried there, weren't right? you? You're so anyway, worried. Yeah, it's Paul Smith. <laughs> uh, played for Liverpool from 2002 to 2005 and then Aston Villa from 2005 to oh, 2007. Oh, Villa? Yeah. He did play for Portsmouth though, didn't he? Uh, they, didn't, they weren't in Premier League at that time. Ah. When he probably did play. Wow. So, there we go. Anyway, you got it right, mate. Well done. Question two. Can you name one of the 11 players who have won the Premier League with two different clubs? Gallas. No. Ashley Cole. Van Persie. Ashley Cole was one of them, yeah. Yes! <laughs> yeah. What a start! Arsenal and Chelsea, no. what? Van Persie? Um, no, no, no he, didn't, he didn't win it. Um, Arsenal. 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 It's yeah. going to be my day, lads. Two. Uh, we've, two. We've, we've all Christmas. seen this before. Christmas. Yeah, but late runners, pal, late runners. Right. Question three. Along with Burnley and QPR, who else was relegated from the Premier League in... The 2014-15 season. Hull. Sheffield United. Hull City is the correct answer. Oh, Not Sheffield United, I'm sorry. 
He just shouts anything. It's like, so hard. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, yeah, yeah, boom, 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 boom. Just guesswork all the way through, mate. Let us think. You do what you need to do. I'll do what I do, all right? Yeah, lose. This is winning. Two, one, nah, nil. Man, early doors, yeah. Question four. Which club did David Moyes manage before Preston. going to Everton? Preston North End. Yes. Has he had these questions? Can I get a hi, y'all? You this know when you two have been going to gym together, have you been do, going through well, this? It's just, no, no, no. Like. it's just completely out of the ordinary. Oh, this isn't is it? what's yeah, getting we're me. Not, we're not used to this Quick answers. Yeah. Very much so. From Obviously the, uh, a dry weekend, mate. 3-1-0. Yeah. <clears throat> he was Preston North End 1998 to 2002, and then Everton from 2002 to 2013. Of course he was. I would have got that. 11 years. But you did. Just not as quick. Question five. Which former Oldham defender played over 500 games for Manchester United? Steve Bruce? No. Over 500 games? Uh, Dennis Irwin. Dennis Irwin. Yes, Irwin. correct answer. He has played over 500, he's played 529 games in all comp for United, scoring 33 goals. Very good. What a left back. Yeah. You need to stop, you keep turning yeah. the questions. I think that's how he's doing it. Oh, I see, I see. <laughs> I haven't got the eyesight for it, but I keep seeing it turn. <laughs> Okay, the scores okay. are 3 one, one, one. One, one Question 6 Who was the last Englishman to manage Chelsea before Lampard? Oddle Potter No, Potter is the correct answer Oh, yep. Ooh, the pressure's now 3-2-1 Scratching his beard Yeah You panicking? Yeah, of course he is I'm just going to start shouting again <laughs> <laughs> Question 7 what was the reason for Gary Lineker for doing the introduction of Match of the Day in his boxes? Leicester won the league. Yeah. Yes. Leicester winning the Premier I'll League. I'll present Match of the Day naked if they win the league, is what he said. But not, quite like then, not, not quite then. No, he didn't. He wore his boxes. Bottled it. Yeah, he bottled it. 4-2-1. 4-2-1. Two, two, question 8. Three questions left. Come on, Davey. Which club nearly signed Robert Lewandowski in 2010? Arsenal. No. I saw this the other day. Which club nearly signed Robert Portsmouth. Lewandowski uh, in 2010? Not Portsmouth. Day. Day. It was 13 years ago, so they're about 22, wouldn't he? Five. Everton. No, it was Blackburn. Yeah, that's oh. what the so the reason why they I'm didn't sign. I don't know why. Yeah, so the reason why he didn't sign because Big Sam had agreed terms with the player, but the ash cloud from the Icelandic. Icelandic volcano yeah, grounded all flights that. and yeah. then the deal fell through. Remember the ash cloud? Yeah. yeah. He'd have been shit at Blackburn, though. Yeah. Probably, yeah. Well, I don't know. It's Lewandowski. Lewandowski. Never know. Um, so no, no one got, no no, one got no that one. No one got that. Question nine. Career path question. Mm. He's good at them. <laughs> <laughs> I have played for Ajax, Inter Milan, Arsenal. I have played for Ajax, Inter Milan. Dennis Burkamp. Dennis Burkamp is the correct answer. Very good. Yeah. So oh, this four, is... Three, one. I might as well keep quiet yeah, on this four, one. Four, three, one. Yeah. No. If you know the answer, you've got to play the game, all right? Okay, mate, I'll play the game. Because <laughs> it's in Ben's favour. I'll why. play the game, mate, I'll play the game. <laughs> Question 10. Who was Sunderland playing against in the infamous Darren Bent Liverpool. Beach Ball incident? Yeah. Liverpool is the correct Pepe answer. Pepe Rayner in goal. Darren Bent. Yeah. Pepe Rayner. save it? Just save it, Megan. <laughs> Just save it, Megan. Is that it? Nine. That was that, that, that was it. That yeah. was it. Right, oh my god, that quiz has gone so class. quick. Well, so quick. well played, Jim. Well, well played. Record time. Hey, I think. Do, you, do you remember? Um, it was a question on the chase, and uh, the question was, um, <laughs> what got in the way of Darren Bent's um, shot when it went past Pepe Reina, basically? And the options were a beach ball. Uh, an ice cream truck and something else <laughs> and the lady said an ice cream truck <laughs> it's yeah. so so good um, that's a football filling quiz thank you we will see you on the 30th 30th so of happy December Christmas. happy Christmas everybody go and drink loads eat loads have a lovely time be merry Not Merry Christmas. Christmas see you soon